Hey guys, welcome back. Today's video is about how I've adapted my makeup um, techniques to wearing one of these, a mask. Now, I guess the first question is, is it okay to wear makeup whilst wearing a mask? And I think the answer is the same as it always is. It's fine as long as you're wearing makeup that doesn't promote the problem. So we come back to the non-comedogenic makeup choices kind of state of mind. And so I think if that's the case, then fine, go for it. Just know that makeup under a mask is somewhat imprecise. It's not an exact art. It requires constant maintenance if you're taking your mask off and on and off and on through the day. So I'm gonna give you some of my tips for maintaining it because in the clinic, I'm mostly masked up. Um, but I might pop out at lunchtime and go for a walk and I won't necessarily wear a mask if I'm out for a walk. So I do want to still look cool together even if I'm largely displaying myself like this in the office. So the first question is what do I do with my base? Should I be going long wear? Should I be skipping it all together? Is it going to make my skin worse if I'm prone to mask me? So I think one of the easiest ways to cope with the need to both wear sunscreen, because masks don't, as far as we know, offer a significant UV protection. No one's checked and, and tested them for that. Um, so you still need to wear sunscreen and we want to minimize the layers that are on our skin under a mask. I think it just reduces the risk of things becoming dry and patchy and moving around. So one of the best bets is to go for a perhaps less polished than usual look with a tinted sunscreen as your base and use that with concealer just where you need it for coverage. So if you go for a tinted sunscreen that's non-clogging and you go for non-clogging concealer, voila, you have a mask friendly base that will give you the confidence you need where you need it. So I'm wearing just a coating of tinted sunscreen which I'm trialing, I'll tell you more about that later. And I am using concealer, NARS Vanilla, the soft matte concealer with my IT Cosmetic airbrush concealer pen, which I'm a bit obsessed with. And the obsession comes from the fact it's got this lovely, you know, swirly, diffusing little um, concealer brush on the end, which is awesome for under eye concealer, as well as, you know, when you've just got a large blemish, and you want to conceal it completely, but the amount of concealer you need um, is more in the middle of the blemish than it is around the edges where the concealer then starts to merge with whatever the skin covering product you have on. So hopefully that's not too complicated sounding, but it just allows you to kind of blend the edges in so that it, your concealer and your base merge seamlessly. Um, so I love this. Thing. When I lose them, I, I get very distressed. And you could even just load that up with concealer on the go if you want to keep things minimal. It's quite an easy thing to keep in a pocket. And you know, in my junior doctor days, I would have used an old Touche Eclat pen in the same kind of way because if I was in theatre wearing a mask, because you have to go through surgical rotations as part of your training, I would have used something like that, you know, because I feel self-conscious if I had a blemish on, you know, this typical U-zone part of the face and the, the mask had rubbed off the concealer I'd painstakingly dotted on in the morning. So, um, yeah, really useful tool. So that's all I'm going to use on the skin in this part of my face. No powder, please. That is just asking for trouble when it comes to promoting blemishes. And as I said, try and keep the products non-long wear. Again, we don't want that occlusive element creeping in to aggravate blemishes. Now, as far as lips go, I do wear something on my mouth. It just feels normal to me to do that. And I've been doing my airbrush concealer pen as a lipstick um, brush. And I've been using up the ends of all old lipsticks. So my lipstick queen, nothing but the, the truth, which is the best pinky nude I've found. Um, and I can't seem to find it in stores. And I'm not shopping as much. So I've been just using these up with an old fashioned, slightly 1980s vibes um, pen. But again, you can tote that around with you and it's got the little fluffy brush on the end if you wanted to buff in, you know, more concealer. 
So that's all I'm going to wear under the mask. But what I found myself doing more now that I'm concealed from this part of you know my face down is doing a little bit more eye makeup for every day just to give my face a little bit of presence and va va vu. And so I've sought out a few new eye products. So a brand I am loving for eye products right now is Surat and their liquid liner is just phenomenal. So I use their lash curlers and I'm currently using the Surat mascara which is the Vulevé mascara in noir so black and it has this super dainty little brush if you can see uh probably the kind of brush I would more typically associate with doing the lower lashes but actually if you curl your upper lashes really well you can almost paint them just at the roots and I find that the less product on the ends the more like fresh faced and youthful it looks. You just get the intensity in the roots by the iris that makes the eyes pop, but doesn't look too done. So liking that very much. And then the liquid liner, um, I have it in, this one's in brown and it's a typical pen liner, but it's amazing how these things can, can differ. So it's got a very dainty tip and it just feels more akin to sort of drawing and um, creates a very elegant, effortless kind of cat flick. Um, so loving that in both brown for day and then black for night. And then I finally bought my first Anastasia product for brows, I don't know where I've been, uh, the Tinted Brow Gel in Brunette. And yeah, it just gives a nice firm hold um, to keep them sort of swept up. And then the final thing I've bought for brows, which has gone missing, anyway, is the Hourglass Eyebrow Pencil in soft brunette. I remember having to go into Space NK and having the lady go, oh, well, we haven't got the tester, but I'm pretty sure you're soft brunette and I'll swap it for you if it doesn't work for you. And she was right. So it's very similar to the Kevin uh Brunette Eyebrow Pencil. It's got that same really quite firm, um, tiny little fine nib of a pencil and it's just great for those kind of little, you know, creating sort of mimicking the appearance of real hairs. And then the final thing are these um, Blotterazzi by Beauty Blender, they're little blotting sponges and you can wash these quite easily the same way you would do with your Beauty Blender. And I just find that at the minute with having to top up the concealer as I go through the day, particularly as I said, around my nose areas that would just naturally, the, the foundation or the sunscreen or whatever tinted product you're using would just naturally wear off. And I'll then blot first with the Blotterazzi pads and then reapply concealer, especially if I'm going out after work. So, you know, these are the little adaptations we've had to make to cope with this sort of brave new world that we're living in where masks are de rigueur but on the whole with the right tools it's all quite manageable I think and I found that those are the things that are really working for me so it'd be great to get your feedback if you try any of those tips how you find them but um, hopefully this video and my last one will help you navigate skincare and makeup with the mask factored in and please hit subscribe and like the video if you find it helpful. Bye for now.